Rejoice, ladies and gentlemen. Premier League football is back this weekend. Match week 30. My prediction's going to be listed off in this video. I'm going to preview all the fixtures. As always, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Lots of coverage from here until the end of the season and beyond for all Premier League football needs that you may have. Going to be live for a few of these fixtures as well, so tune into those. I will mention them as we come into the fixtures and as we come across them. Uh, but starting off, we have Newcastle versus West Ham. And sound off in the comments with every one of these fixtures, any and all of them. Let me know what you think. I really want to hear from you. As always, this is a, it's a big kind of clash. You know, West Ham, David Moyes is there. He's had links to Newcastle for tons and tons of years. Even before he was Sunderland boss, he was being linked to Newcastle. Now he's at West Ham. And I mean, this is a fixture that usually favors Newcastle. And if you look at the form charts, I mean, fairly similar. You know, West Ham have two draws, two wins, and a loss. Newcastle have two losses, a draw, and two wins. Almost identical, but shockingly to some, West Ham are higher up in the table. 44 points, 29 matches played. You know, not the most pristine of situations for them, but definitely better than I think even, you know, the most ardent of West Ham fans would have expected. I mean, you would have told them they'd be ahead of Chelsea and Newcastle and Brighton. They'd be like, oh my God, we're, you know, we're in a title race or something. But obviously that's not the case. I do think sadly though, West Ham fans, I think Newcastle has this one. 2-1 win written all over it for me. Goals from Isak and Jacob Murphy, I'd say. Uh, and for West Ham, consolation. Honestly, I think James Ward-Prowse free, free kick seems right. Either that or someone like i don't know kudus or bowen scoring i'm gonna go with james ward prowse free kick as a consolation goal for that but you know as always a very kind of tenuous fixture here really tough one for both sides to kind of have to get at 14 draws between the sides i mean there's a lot of these fixtures that have happened um i mean that's almost equal to the amount of wins west Ham have in total so not a favorable kind of meeting up of teams for West Ham, but I'm going to favor Newcastle 2-1 win. Uh, shouldn't be the easiest for them, but it will be enough to get them over the line at St. James Park. Next up, we have Bournemouth versus Everton. And honestly, you look at these two sides and Bournemouth, you know, they're on 35 points, 10 points clear of Everton, but at the same time, they're going to be looking to make a bit of a, gap between themselves and crystal palace and the rest of i'd say the bottom what six or seven uh, seven sides at the bottom there you know they're they're really gonna be looking at this fixture as a perfect opportunity to do so because winning against everton keeps them at bay and you know brentford and palace i'd say are the only other two sides besides everton and luton that can realistically get relegated barring a tremendously terrible run of form bournemouth Fulham, Chelsea, all safe. Uh, and I think this fixture is going to reflect that. I mean, you look at the stats. Everton's form is going off a cliff. You know, Bournemouth had a 4-3 win against Luton. They had a 2-0 one against Burnley. They lost only 1-0 to City at home. Even got a 2-all draw against Newcastle there. The Sheffield draw, admittedly, is a bit of an L for Bournemouth, but I mean, is it much better for Everton? Absolutely not. I mean, they have only gotten two points out of 15. That's not very good, let's be real. So I'm going to predict a 1-0 Bournemouth win. I'm going to say that Antoine Semenyo scores. Got to give him a shout-out. He's been brilliant this season, one of my favorite players to watch in the bottom half. Uh, him and Asuna, I mean, they have a kind of sneaky good forward line. Bournemouth. I mean, even Dongo Utara, I think he scored his first goal for the club recently. He's been impressive when I've seen him come on, but I think Semenyo will chalk up a goal for himself, getting a 1 0 win against Everton. Now, Chelsea versus Burnley. And this is a clash that, in many respects, you know, no Davida Trofofana for Burnley because he is on loan from Chelsea. Uh, he's a player who, you know, he hel he's helped out Burnley quite a bit recently being really good in the forward line, scoring some important goals. And, you know, for Burnley, they'll feel a little hard done by that um, in the sense that 
Now they've only gotten one win ever uh, at against Chelsea. That one one being at Stamford Bridge. Will they repeat that? I don't think so. I mean, very very doubtful that they do. Um, I'm gonna say. I mean, even you look at the form, not the best form for Burnley. They have picked it up a bit with a two one win against Brentford and two all draw against West Ham, but. City, one all draw, not bad at all. Two all draw with Brentford, not great, but fine, I suppose. Chelsea are shaky, that's without a doubt. But at the same time, they're not nearly as poor as someone like a Burnley. So for me, I'm going to have to say a 3-0 Chelsea win here. Goals from Mikhailo Mudrik. Um, let's see who else might score. Cole Palmer, for sure. Kyle Mudrick, Cole Palmer. Who are these guys? Do you see how many players they have? Wow, that is just like, looks like a ton of, that is crazy. Uh, yeah, but I'm going to say Cole Palmer, Mikhailo Mudrick, and say Nicholas Jackson. Why not? Uh, next up, we have Nottingham Forest versus Crystal Palace, and this is a proper, proper relegation scrap. I mean, Forest here in 18th, uh, Palace in 14th trying to escape the fray here. I mean, I'm thinking, let's see how these, what? What? Palace have never beaten Forest in the Prem? Mate, what? Damn, For Forest got to unlock. I mean, it's got to be a draw or a win for Forest then. I mean, if... And that form's not that great, so if it's ever going to happen, I mean, you need for either side, really. Both sides are kind of in poor spot. I'm going to go with a one-all draw. I think goals from Taiwan Yi and... Say John Philippe Mateta for Palace. One all draw written all over it. Uh Sheffield United versus Fulham. And if you're a Sheffield United fan, I mean this season has been rotten. They've ha they've gotten half a point a game played so far. It's just not great. And Fulham, I mean, you know, they're on 29 games played, uh 38 points. Not the best. Definitely fall off from last season a bit. But I mean I still I still think I gotta give it to Fulham here. And I think I'm gonna go with a 3-0 Fulham win away from home. Goals from let's say Bobby Deckard over Reed. Um Raul Jimenez and let's go with Tete. Let's go with Tete seems fair next up is tottenham versus luton and i will be live for this fixture ladies and gentlemen so keep an eye peeled i'll be covering the rest of the uh 3 p.m uk kickoffs uh kicking off at 11 eastern standard time i will be live for all for the tottenham luton one but i'll be covering all of them as much as i can keeping you updated on the scores so feel free to stop by if any of those fixtures that i just listed are of any interest to you Newcastle and West Ham I won't be live for. Desperate need of a haircut, if I'm being honest. So, got to take the L on that one. and Be looking spiffy. Only one meeting between the sides ever in Premier League history. That being the 1-0 win at Kenilworth Road for Spurs. And Luton's form has kind of... It's kind of gotten in this weird spot where... I mean, they've had tough sides. You know, Liverpool's tough. Villa's tough. But they've drawn against kind of mediocre sides like Palace and Forest. Bournemouth beat them 4-3. They could have gotten a draw there too, but you know it didn't quite work out for them. Tottenham, three wins and two losses. Admittedly, two losses against less than spectacular sides. I mean, Wolves hasn't been bad whatsoever. They've been pretty great. But Fulham's definitely... I mean, they're not too far off from one another, another on points, but I feel like Wolves have played a bit more of a attractive brand of football which i mean doesn't really matter at the end of the day you know points on the board really do but i mean if i'm gonna predict this i think i'm gonna have to go with the spurs win I, a pretty healthy spurs win at that I, i'm gonna say 4-1 uh goals from young uh pape sar kulishevsky and 
let's say Timo Werner. Why not? Timo Werner. And for uh loot in town, I'm gonna say that Chidozio Bene scores. Why not? Uh also we'll be well yes. Also, we'll be live for Aston Villa Wolves. This is a derby, ladies and gentlemen. That if you look at I mean, it's not one that is really all that beneficial for Aston Villa at home. Only one home win in 17 meetings. Um, I I think this is going to be a draw as well. Um, two all draw is what I'm feeling. For Villa, I could see Ali Watkins and Douglas Louise scoring. And for Wolves, let's say Mateus Cunha and... Let's say Mario Lamina. Why not? So Cunha and Lamina for Wolves to score. And for Aston Villa, we're going to go with Watkins and Douglas Luiz. And moving forward, because I'll be live for basically Tottenham, Luton, and Aston Villa, Wolves. This third fixture, the last fixture of Saturday, Brentford versus Man United. Unsure if I'll go live for it. I'd love to, but depending on how timing and everything works out it might not work out for me only five meetings between these two sides almost all well all but one favoring man united one home win there for brentford lat this was yes this is the famous four nil at the start of ten hogs tenure uh which honestly i feel like kind of set this weird tone for united across the course of the entirety so far of Ten Hag's kind of uh, tenure. It's not been like this big cloud, like, oh my God, they lost to Brentford 4-0, you know, two years ago now, basically. No, it's more so that that really felt like a moment where United had to had to buck up a bit, you know, and they had to really kind of improve. And I think they have since then. It's just a fixture like that can never... Can, can randomly happen whenever. Uh, for Brentford, though, I mean, you look at these stats, they're on a horrific run of form. I'm favoring United all the way, though. Um, I'd love for United to lose like 17 nil as a Liverpool fan and all, but I'm going to predict a 2 1 United win. Goals from Rasmus Hoyland and Alejandro Garnacho. And for Brentford, I'm going to go with Ivan Tony to score. So I will be live for that. In the event of me just, you know, having enough energy realistically, because by that time it'll be pretty late in the day. And also, I will have done two live streams back to back, also, probably dropping shorts and videos in between. So, who knows how that'll, uh, or maybe dropping shorts, but definitely like a video or two for these two fixtures. Definitely gonna have to talk on Champions League race between these three in general, but uh, yeah. And as for Sunday, my beloved Liverpool take on Brighton and Hove Albion. And this fixture has a bit of a new added layer, I guess. Um, obviously, Roberto De Zerbi has been linked to the Liverpool job. Uh, but for a lot of people, he felt like a tertiary or fourth option, possibly, you know, maybe behind the likes of Nagelsmann and Amarim, Xabi Alonso. Well, too soon. I know. I know Liverpool fans. I'm hurting too. Xabi Alonso is not coming next season. He said it himself. You just gotta, just gotta take those. You know, you can't really let it fester. I will put out a video talking about all that news very soon, maybe sooner than you think, Liverpool fans. But as for this fixture, I think this is gonna be a hectic one. I mean, you look at the head-to-head -head matchups. Uh, Liverpool's got seven wins. Uh, there's four draws in the mix there. Two total wins for uh, Brighton. And I mean, the more recent ones have been have been a bit harsher, realistically. I mean, a three nil win at the Amex last uh, January was real kind of low for Liverpool throughout the course of last season. Two all draw um, this season as well at the Amex against Brighton, which it seems like they've become a bit of a bogey team for Liverpool since March twenty twenty two. Form though, I mean, even this form. I mean, I'm still going to favor Liverpool. I still think Liverpool are going to win, but Brighton, I do think, are 
at least for Liverpool, a very, very threatening side. I think this is going to finish 3-2. Uh, goals from, for Liverpool, Mohamed Salah, um, Luis Diaz, and Dominic Sobosai. And for Brighton, we'll go with Joel Pedro and Julio Enciso. I mean, Enciso has been coming back from injury, so we'll see how he kind of gets on. He might not even necessarily start the match, but I could see him coming off the bench. I mean, Matoma's out for a while anyway, so they need depth on the wings. Uh, maybe Fati starting or somebody else out on the wings. Who knows what Deserby's planning? Because this could be like an audition for Liverpool, re realistically. Sh you know, should the Amarim deal not go through? I mean, then I think Deserby is like the top of the shortlist. So, I mean, if you want my personal opinion, I don't know if I. I don't know if I can trust Deserbi with the same level of trust that I would have given Xabi Alonso or uh, Ruben Amarim. But at the end of the day, if he gets appointed manager, I have to back him. You know, that's my club's manager. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, Going to have a more detailed video on that very soon. Will be live for this, as always. Make sure to let me know what you think about the potential Roberto Deserbi links, Brighton fans. I would imagine you're not too enthralled because, you know, you would never want another team snooping around your manager. But alas, you know, how do you think he would fit at Liverpool? Do you think it's an actually good fit? Do you think he'll take the move and then drop off and his, you know, qualities plumbing off, you know, the face of an earth, of the earth? Uh, or do you think he would thrive at Liverpool? For me personally, I, I'm in this state where I just see too much of too many draws, too much kind of complacency in this Brighton side. Admittedly, lots of injuries recently. But at the same time, I don't know if he has the level of acumen that I would really want. But, I mean, if he's appointed, he's appointed, and I can't really say much about it. I mean, I could say what I want, but I can't do anything about it. So 3-2 win for Liverpool there. As a rem reminder, again, I will be live for that. Uh, now, moving forward to Manchester City versus Arsenal. And ladies and gentlemen, this is probably the game of the season. And I hate saying that because every time one of the top three sides face another top three side, it's the game of the season. And I mean, listen, this is this is going to be, I think, the final meeting amongst top three sides or the sides in the top three at the moment. Uh, so this has got a lot of implications. And Arsenal fans, hear me out here. Let's have a let's have a heart to heart here, like genuinely. I'm a Liverpool fan, and if you are an Ar Arsenal fan, you're an Arsenal fan in this case. And if you're a neutral, just try to act like you're the Arsenal fan. That's the only way that this could work. But I'm a Liverpool fan, and I mean this with entire sincerity. Final third of the season run in Manchester City is your worst nightmare. They are ready. You might think they're not ready. You might think that, oh, Kyle Walker picked up a knock. Oh, Holland picked up a knock. Oh, Stones told Rice he doesn't know who they're facing next. Don't shut up. Manchester City have won the Premier League three times in a row. They are mentality monsters. Simply put, those players are true, true professionals. And when the going gets tough, they get rough, man. They really do. I've seen my side lose on the final day of the season. To Manchester City a few times now with players that were world class on our side. You know, like they had world class players. We had world class players. They just so happened to be able to, you know, just keep it up longer. And that is really the best kind of testament to Man City. I mean, let's look at this. You know, Arsenal historically have the advantage in wins. And, I mean, you look at the recent meetings. Arsenal's got a win at the Emirates Stadium in London, uh, in October. You have a 4-1 win for Man City last April, a 3-1 win in February of 2023, uh, another win in January of 2022 at, on the New Year's Day, too. And then in, a 5-0 in there. And I hate to say it, but I think City is going to win 4 0. I think they're going to absolutely flatten Arsenal. And once again, Arsenal fans, I'm being serious. Like, look me in my eyes. 
City does not mess around. You might have gotten that 1-0 win earlier in the season, but at this point, this City, this iteration of this squad, this level that they're at, despite the form, despite anything you might think, despite Ederson being out potentially, despite Kyle Walker being out potentially, never let your guard down with Manchester City. Just don't. Just don't. Just expect the worst. Believe my prediction. Even if you think I'm stupid, even if you, you know, don't want it to be the case, because if you are an Arsenal fan listening, you wouldn't want it to be the case. You'd want to be the side winning 5-0, not losing. Everybody wants their side to be the side that's winning 5-0. If I think City is going to win 5-0, and if you could brace yourself for this impending effectively apocalypse of football that city is about to unleash on arsenal you know if you're prepared mentally and you can just kind of already accept the feet ahead of the game i know it's a crazy thing to say but it it will make it feel a lot easier admittedly listen if there's any side to stick it to pep guardiola's arsenal i or pep guardiola's man city my apologies this version of Arsenal is pretty high up there. They're one of the better sides in terms of possession play. They play a very similar style to City, and both sides score tons of goals. Pretty great defenses as well. I think Saliba and Gabriel have been two of the best center backs in the league, better than the likes of, say, Ruben Diaz for City, or maybe not John Stones, but say someone like Ake. Uh, you know, players like that definitely have kind of tapered off a bit. Arsenal have become really solid as an outfit. And I'm not even joking. I just think City's got this... I think they've let this chip on their shoulder kind of thing develop at this point throughout the course of the season where they, for some reason, feel as if, you know... I mean, obviously, it's not their standard, quote-unquote, to be third. They are only a point off, but knowing them, they will look at that as like a abject failure on their behalf, which to some people, you might be like, yeah, that's fair. You guys are, you know the most lucratively structured club in the Premier League, possibly Europe. Um, and to that, I think it just doesn't matter. I think it's going to be a 5-0 win. Goals from Erling Holland, Julian Alvarez, Kevin De Bruyne, Bernardo Silva, and Phil Foden. Um, and the reason that I think that City is about to trounce Arsenal is simply put, Arsenal... Not even that Arsenal bottle bottle it like every season because that's, I just think, a little lazy. Even if they do, it doesn't mean it'll happen, you know, like guaranteed every time. I think it's mostly down to the fact that this Arsenal side really just lack that, that true experience of having this, you know, running and then winning it. And if... You're facing almost any other side. Even if you're facing Liverpool. Every other side in the Premier League, you could have the leeway of, oh yeah, like, we're not going to succumb to the pressure because, you know, we're Arsenal. We play beautiful, brilliant football. And while that is the case, so do City. And trust me, City will be bringing their A game. They will not stop. And I think they're just going to, They'll get a goal within the first 20 minutes, and then it'll just, as the match progresses, one turns to two, turns to three, turns to four. Next thing you know, you've scored five and you're on the floor. Very, very kind of bleak reality, possibly for Arsenal fans to have to think about that. But trust me, as a Liverpool fan, you should root for your team. You should watch the fixture. You should be supporting your team. Go ahead, support your club, give it your all. I want to draw as a Liverpool fan, but I'm just saying, never get your hopes up with Manchester City. You just never know. Because when they turn up, it's different from somebody else turning up. This isn't this isn't any Burnley or West Ham that you could ship five, six, and they'll pass. And, you know, just be like, yeah, we're we're brilliant. This is a side that if they could get you and they could and they're on their day they're they're ready to really ratchet it up in a 
honestly foul manner like it's stuff that as an opposing fan you're seeing your team face sitting it's like they're helpless you it's it's one of the worst feelings in the world they're basically fully fit too there's rumors that kyle walker and john stones could be out but i don't know i just think city have a supreme advantage here i think that they are going to prove that they are still in fact favorites for the premier league this season they're going to pick up a big big win against arsenal taking them the 66 which would put liverpool on 66 or 67 arsenal on 64 and i mean you know beyond that i mean it starts becoming kind of just like a endurance test i mean a title race always is an endurance test but i don't think that this 5-0 6-0 4-0 i don't think it's necessarily sustainable winning that many times consistently to that degree i it just doesn't really happen in a sport like that. And it would require a big, big physical sacrifice that as, you know, the Champions League comes into fray, as Arsenal have to tr- travel to Germany to face Bayern Munich, City will be ready for that. City, all their players for the most part, will have firsthand experience of going, doing that, winning, and going to the next round of the competition. Arsenal, they, you know, they beat Porto. It was a close win at the end of the day. And, you know, you look ultimately at having to face Bayern. I mean, they have to face Tottenham too still, Manchester United still, Everton on the last day. I mean, Everton could be fighting for their lives. So this is a big, big match for Arsenal fans. And they should all hope to win. But I think it's going to be an absolute bloodbath. So. Thank you so much for joining me. Those are my predictions for Match Week 30 in the Premier League. Subscribe if you're new. Comment down below with your thoughts on all these fixtures. I'll be live for Manchester City, Arsenal, Liverpool, Brighton, Aston Villa, Wolves, Tottenham, Luton. Possibly Brentford, Manchester United. Uh, Yes, I repeat. I I might have misspoke, but yeah, so. Tottenham, Luton, Villa, Wolves, Liverpool, Brighton, Manchester City, Arsenal confirmed will be going live for those fixtures. And if time permits and my schedule works out, I'll be going live for Brentford versus Manchester United as well. Thank you so much for joining me. Hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're new, like if you enjoyed, and comment down below. I want to hear your thoughts. I'm Sideline Sato. Thank you so much for joining me. Peace.